Hey everybody, welcome to a video on the Constructor Criticism YouTube channel. I'm Spencer, host of Constructor Criticism and Limited Time Only, two podcasts about getting better at Magic the Gathering. Today is an awesome day, it's Wednesday Night Warrior, and we're going to talk about something that's really fun, super awesome. Also, sorry about the purple, or maybe I'm not sorry, maybe you love purple, uh, but we're going to, I'm at Oasis Games, uh, kind of just doing some work, I thought I'd record a quick video. Um, so, what I want to talk to you about today is expanding your game. So this is something you can hear pretty often from Magic players. They talk about uh, the, you know, expanding their range. It may be something that you might hear pretty often. And uh, the way where this comes from is understanding the type of decks that people play. And this comes from some of the major archetypes. So you have control decks that are trying to either control the board, control the stack, things like that. You have aggro decks that are trying to attack you, maybe go a little bit wider, uh, smaller creatures, but uh, get in a lot of damage really quickly. You have combo decks that are trying to maybe kill you um, through a combination of cards and executing that combo. Um, you know, whether that's something like Splinter Twin or whether that's something like Storm, things like that. And then you have mid-range decks. These are pretty much what Magic the Gathering is made up of right now. So mid-range decks are... Uh, typically, you know, some uh, efficient creatures, efficient card draw, built on efficiency, um, trying to own the mid part of the game, and then close out the game quickly once you start to own that game. Um, slightly smaller than a control deck, but kind of can play either side of the field. And uh, that's kind of where people see these major archetypes. So, like, the, these are the types of decks that people are talking about when they want to expand the range. They want to become a better control player. They want to become a better aggro player. They want to become a better combo player, things like that. And so I think that the main part about this is understanding what your skill set currently is. What are you good at? Why are you good at it? Um, and then kind of breaking down where can you improve, right? Maybe you need to improve at playing an aggro deck. Maybe you need to improve at playing control. And when you expand those skill sets and understand the parts of the game that make you good at doing these things, right? It's not that you are a good control player, but why are you a good control player? And from there, you can understand like, okay, so this is why I'm good at control, and then decide what makes me bad at aggro, and then expand your skill sets from there. This is important because it, part of it is beating your own bias. So oftentimes in Magic, you'll hear people talk about how they think X is bad. Ramp decks are bad. Control decks are bad. Aggro decks are bad. White weenie is bad. And it's just a blanket statement about all of these specific type of deck. And it's not really true. Um, but people think it. Why do they think it? And it's because they have a personal bias either against these decks or, or somewhere around there. And they have to learn how to beat those biases and get better at just understanding why a deck is doing well rather than the things that they don't like about a deck. Another common thing that you hear Magic players say is, I'm an X player. So they say, I am a control player. I am a mid-range player. I am a aggro player. And I think that too often that this is just incorrect. Why are you this player? And why can't you be more than that player? Because to be truth, uh, it just means that you haven't improved in all the areas that you can, right? Everybody can be an aggro player. Everybody can be a control player. It's about this, this you know, narrowing in on your skill set and improving in those skills. And I think that the benefits of this are pretty obvious. First of all, you have a better opportunity of being able to, you know, competently pilot one of the best decks. So if there's five really good decks, if the more that you've expanded your game, the more of a chance that you can confidently say, well, I think I could play this deck, get it in some practice with it, and easily execute with that deck. If you only can play aggro decks, then you're only going to be able to compete at the highest level when aggro is good. And that's not all the time. I think it's also... Uh, gives you more clarity into understanding your favorite decks. So having a large skill set and understanding more parts of the game make it easier for you to understand what your favorite deck is supposed to be doing against those decks because you can inherently understand what those decks are trying to do. And this is really important and really powerful. Uh, if you don't understand, it, it makes it a lot harder because you have to really jam and jam and jam. Whereas if you take this other approach where you're expanding your game all the time, you don't have to do that as much. So, But that's it for this week. Uh, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. What have you done to expand your game? Don't forget to check out the sponsor of this video uh, on puremtgo.com and their sponsor at MTG Traders. Um, you can also support this content directly by going to uh, Easy Game Media on Patreon or patreon.com slash ccmtg. Thank you everybody for watching. And we'll see you guys all next week.